I, I don't know when this is going to end up going up, but uh, happy Back to the Future Day. Oh, that's right. It's today, isn't it? Yeah. Today is the day. You know, my son still hasn't seen that, but he's dying to, so. Oh, you should watch it today. I should. Actually, that's a good, yeah, good call. Last night, I sat down and I made him watch the new trailer for Star Wars. The Force. It's calling to you. Oh. Have you seen it yet? Actually, I haven't yet. It is... It's like spine-chillingly good. Just let it in. And he, he was like dead, there was just like dead silence. He was literally just sat there like this. <laughs> Hello, Internet. It is I, David Hewlett, and... Uh, Q Dragon. And we are here for another Geek and Dragon episode. Who's the geek? Who's the dragon? This week, we'll find out. And uh, this week, we're talking about... Molly Robotics which is uh, a company that is attempting, well, they're going to be releasing a sort of fully automated robot kitchen. Hmm. And this really, I mean, this really tickled your fancy, right? You've been going on about this for a while. Oh, yeah, because yeah, I, I, I love cooking, but obviously I physically can't cook, so I just have to, like, whip my various friends and family into doing stuff for me. <laughs> You've got you've got the meat puppets instead of yes. the uh, robotic uh, robotic arms. The video that will that will suggest that everyone has a look at and we'll show a little bit up here um, was a was a, basically a prototype that they were showing off at one of the trade shows. Their promo video at the at, on their website is is beautiful. Yeah, I mean obviously the current design is a bit more bulkier than the CGI animation yeah. they have on the website, but you know. And, Despite some aesthetic uh, differences, the capabilities are still yeah. The design, I mean, the design work is gorgeous. The companies that they've got involved on that um, uh, they have done a, like a gorgeous job of making it kind of friendly and you know look like it. It should, looks like it belongs in the kitchen, not in a sci-fi film of some sort. But the actual hands themselves are done by the Shadow Robot Company, right? Uh, I, I'm not sure. I, I, that was the sense that I got because I started. I sort of, sort of I, there was sort of a list of people who were involved. There were a couple of really sort of high-end uh, designers, product design people, and then there were mm -hmm. sort of more of the sort of the robotic nerds. And um, I, of course, naturally get drawn towards the robotic nerds. But there was a the, sh the Shadow Robot Company seemed to have developed the hands, and there are these these beautifully rather dexterous. Um, uh, it, it looks like it's. Uh, Looks like they're controlled by, by just little cables, basically in the in the wrist. So it makes them yeah. very similar to human hands, and um, uh, they're not as pretty on their website as they are on uh, on the uh, on the on the Molly Robotics one. But uh, they've obviously come a long way with with the development of those hands. How they have it working now is that basically it's not just the robot arms; it's sort of a full kitchen with it's like a kitchen bubble, a kitchen module, because that way every all the stove and storage units are sort of in the same spot. Yeah. So what they do actually, which is kind of interesting, and one of the points they sort of keep highlighting, essentially motion capturing chefs making recipes, and then those motions get uploaded to a system that the robot then replicates. Obviously, yeah, maybe they'll see this, I don't know. One of the biggest applications that would be awesome is either um, remote control or, like with my situation, mm. basically hooking up some sort of control system to the robotic arms for real time use. They have that screen that comes down to basically protect protect people from robotic knives and stuff. Yeah. Um, and scalding liquids and all that kind of stuff. They were saying like, oh, if you're creating new condos, you can have these things installed and that'll that'll distinguish you guys from other condos and stuff. Like it was something they were saying you should build into the, your units and that's gonna attract people to buy it. But 
strangely, they haven't talked about it from um, you know, from a disability standpoint. Yeah, not at all, which I think is sort of a real big opportunity because I'm sure there's a lot of people with either, you know, my condi- my situation or even less disabled mm. who would find use in, um, you know, having a direct system. The technology is amazing. The way they put it together, it looks absolutely like just rock solid. Like it just, it looks, it, it doesn't have that, you know, there's, there's so many of those sort of older, older video of, of these arms trying to, trying to be dexterous about things. And this, this mm-hmm. really has a nice sort of almost human flow to it. Yeah. Um, well, well, because it's recorded human motion, right? Yeah. The, the actual mechanics is very well done. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was really impressed with that. Mark Kutkowski who's at Stanford. He's the guy at Stanford who I guess has developed some of this technology. And I, I looked at his, went to his website and had a look at what, what he was up to. And he's involved in a number of things, which are really cool. They've got these, they've got these planes that sense an, an impending wall and then upright themselves and then hook on and, and latch onto the wall. That's cool. And they can also take off from it as well. And they have these little tiny talons that they've created which have just just sort of like hook into the wall and then release depending on 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 when they want to when they want to take off again but so there's that there's and there's also these gecko feet which i'm sure you've seen oh yeah i think we've all seen the gecko feet yeah these little micro little micro fins that stick up against the wall and allow allow these very heavy weights to be to walk up sheer surfaces and stuff someone was saying that we're at the robotic stage, we're at the we're at the early DIY build your own computer stage of the of the um, PC revolution. Mm-hmm. So basically, it's for tinkerers and for serious nerds right now. But within the next you know ten years or so, we're going to have things scampering around our feet and doing things for us all over the place. So I mean, I think the, the the very professional you know design and look and you know sort of the more high-end aspirations of my robotics is sort of a sign of that that is trying to like become more mainstream. Well, and a friendly, a friendly face on it. We were talking the other day. We were both surprised to to hear that Apple had a uh, telepresence robot. Yeah, I I'd only ever seen like you know the iPad on a stick. Type yeah, thing. which is basically what this is. But it just as soon as you have companies like that trying to make it. Sort of friendly. There's the iRobotics as well. The guys who did the uh, the little the little uh, vacuum cleaners that ran around. Yeah, Roombas. Yeah. Um, the Roombas. Yeah, I I owned a Roomba <laughs> for a while. It didn't really work for me, but but I could see it. You know, again, I could see you know a few generations away from the original one that I had being of use. I'm terrible about that. I tend to buy the first generation and then give up on things. I had oh, a yeah. Newton. I had the Apple Newton. The first oh, yeah, how was that? It's actually sitting yeah. up there somewhere. And so in that mess somewhere, there's a there's a there's an Apple Newton, and uh, uh, it was a disaster, just a yeah. just absolute disaster. I mean, but the potential, the idea of in the palm of your hand, well, almost two hands because it was quite big at the time. My concern is that right now, it seems very locked down. Like mm-hmm. you know, they always they keep calling it an iTunes style library of recipes. Mm-hmm. Is that what is is what? the robot runs on. Right. What like gives it the commands. But, you know, I would love to see give tinkerers and people sort of in that world access to the software. Mm. Because right now, it's it's a personal chef. Mm. Right? You pick a recipe you want, it makes it for you, done. Right. And, you know, they also talk about, you know, if you're a chef, they they seem to imply that they're going to also release some way to record your recipes right. and upload them. So you can release your own album. You release yeah. your album of recipes and things. But, you know, what I would love to see is, can you take those recipes and abstract them into unique tasks? Right. Like, just stirring X. Right. Add a dash of this. And then, without recording your own motions, could you piece together an original recipe from a series of commands? Mm, right. 
So you almost want to sort of split them up into little tiny bite-sized pieces that you could then you could then reconfigure into different recipes. Exactly, because in that if that was possible, you wouldn't even necessarily need direct control of the of the movement to make new recipes and for someone like me to be able to cook. Yeah, because in a way you want the robotic side of stuff to handle all of the dexterous stuff for you. You just want to be able to tell it what to do. Exactly. So could I say, you know, uh, yeah, you know, maybe if there's something that isn't in the library, you'd have to record a unique motion. Right. But in general, could you be like, okay, stir for, for five minutes, then do this, then do this, and just piece together all of the steps. I'd be curious to know what kind of sensors it's dealing with, because it'd be nice it, to... It says there are tactile sensors. There are tactile sensors, huh. But, I mean, you really want to be able to test temperature and and the viscosity of things and and like to because all those little things that you pick up as you're as you're cooking or yeah, like you know, don't especially, pick up as you're cooking. and you know especially you know just with ingredients in general there's a lot of variability mm -hmm. and you know basically for me it would be hooking up a bunch of uh, uh, EMS sensors mm -hmm. to my arms and to my shoulders and then you know, trying to work out how to control everything. But it, I could see that. I mean, I'm, I imagine that part of this stuff is also liability on their part. I mean, they That's can't. True. They don't want people flailing around a, a hot stove with with robotic arms. I'm sure. Well, that's um, why you have the screen. That's why. You, well, exactly. Yes, but I mean, I can just sort of see these little sort of shutting down. I can just see the thing sort of being a little contained fireball as you as you as, as you. If you run into any issues in the um, in the kitchen, I mean, look, I love the idea. Anyways, I love the idea of a kitchen, just the just the, the little self-contained kitchen unit that that sort of looks after itself. I imagine like one that cleans itself, one that well, cleans it, up this after one you. does. In the promo video, they show it cleaning up. Of actually wiping the counter. Yeah, it was sort of wiping the counter though. I don't know how. You know, is it really cleaning it, or is it just sort of just mm -hmm. moving stuff around? I don't know how many people are going to spend, other than from a novelty factor, spend. What is it? Seventy thousand dollars or seventy-five thousand dollars on the um, on these on these units? I like your idea of discrete actions that could be mm -hmm. basically drag and drop into the right order for you to create other things. That's yeah. what you need to do. That's what they yeah. should. I wonder if they are doing that. That's what they should. If they're not, they uh, should be. I'm sure they must, at some level, be at least thinking about that. Because otherwise, again, it is very a very locked down system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's it's a library. It's not, it's not a composition tool. It's a very smart marketing tool, though. Because yeah, because it gets it is. their name out there. I thought that the Master Chef tie-in was really smart, where they basically, you know, hey, anyone can be a Master Chef if it's if it's doing that. Yeah, so because basically they they hired I forget his name, but they hired a Master Chef. Was it the guy who won the UK Master Chef or to do the mocap? Yeah, yeah. which may again. What's fascinating about this is there's so many jobs that we hadn't, that we've always assumed is a human job. Like, you know what I mean? Like cooking yeah. just seems like one of those things that is innately human. Yeah. Um, and there's definitely a distrust and a lack of respect for processed foods. And yet, this is the ultimate in food processing. I, mean, I, just, I do have a concern. Yes. From a technical standpoint, unless you really load that thing up with sensors and give it some AI, I feel like this. I I can I have concerns about how consistent it can be. Because mm. just like anything with flour, anything with thickening agents, with vegetables there's so much variability that's what i was concerned about product yeah. to product that you know i feel like you would need a person monitoring it at some level mm. at least to start i think uh, but again i think that's it i think it's it's one of those things it's like programming where you when you break a task down into smaller and smaller pieces to try to cover every possible outcome. And I remember that when I was like writing scripts for, um, for dial-up modems. We used to, have to dial up and send commands to, 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 uh, uh, to mainframes back when I, was, when I was playing with this stuff. 
um, you would have to, you would, you'd run, you'd record your keystrokes, then you'd go back and realize, oh, sometimes it answers after one ring, sometimes it answers after four rings, sometimes it gets a busy. So you'd have to then account for all that. Then, what if there's a delay in this or a delay in that or a mess or a system message comes up to that messes with your with your with your recording and when it's a recording it's a dumb system there's no feedback there's no it just continues to plow on um, no matter what shows up and I, f I feel like right now right now they're at a brute force approach to to this as opposed to a um, it, the refinements that will come later that will allow it to figure you know problems out for itself yeah and you know for yeah I just well, then you know, you're cooking a piece of meat how hot exactly is the pan mm -hmm. when is the meat hitting the pan does it need more seasoning? Does it need less seasoning? It, like, you know, the robot can't taste. What part of the meat? Like, what if there's something like, wrong with the meat? What if, the, you know, what's the... You know, what, what if it's a weird shape? What if it's, yeah. you know, like, there's just well, so many variables. It, look, a good example, this morning I'm making breakfast for the kid. I'm making lunch for the kid. And I uh, always like to get a little bit of fruit, berries and fruit and stuff in there. I put in the berries, and then I go, ah, I put on my glasses, I have a look, and the berries are a little off. There's a little bit of mold on a couple of the berries. You know what I mean? So our yeah, robot yeah, just yeah, blindly goes ahead and makes a pie out of that. And, you know, it, they didn't really show where are the ingredients coming from. That, well, that was my thing. It's like, how do you restock this thing? So it must have, and it must uh, have very uh, specific know, places. You know, I, I, I think I would guess how it works there's some sort of ingredients platform, and the first thing you do, you load up a recipe, and you go, okay, place all the ingredients here, 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 here. Right, you'd have to. You'd have to have that, yeah. Um, it's like, what if you're missing an ingredient? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah well, that's, well, that's it. I mean, it, you know, does it then just, does it realize it's not holding something? Does it realize it doesn't have the, the spaghetti sauce or whatever the, whatever the heck they're, they're making? Again, I, I, I'm sure there must be there must be ways around it, but there are obviously limitations to what you can and can't do with this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but I, 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 I would love access to the setup and some kind of coding expert who can tinker with the software and you know fiddle with alternate control methods, alternate ways of inputting commands, rather than just loading up the mocap. Absolutely. I think, I mean, this is, so this would be our call. This would be our, our, our call to, uh, to, to Molly Robotics would be to say, you know, let's, let's see, let's see how you can crack this thing open and, uh, and make it more accessible for, uh, for people with disabilities and, uh, and other, and basically open themselves up to opportunities for, to, for other markets. Other than yeah, just high-end what, what, With direct control, what you can do is be like, have like even one able-bodied chef and then hook them up to like four mollies. And then, you know, while one set is doing a very mundane task, you switch over control, you ad adjust, you go over, you taste, you, okay, add, add more salt, and then you switch over to the other one. Okay, this is a really complicated flip. Let me take the direct control, flip, okay, now stir, wait, you know. Mm. Are they ever going to be able to taste? Well, yeah, I'm sure eventually there'll be some way that that, that we can figure out to have to allow AIs to, to to get a sense of taste in a way. Yeah, but even then, what does the chef want it to taste like? Yeah, yeah. Um, like, do you, do you just calibrate it every few months mm -hmm. and taste a bunch of varying degrees of saltiness and sweetness and be like, okay, I want this dish to be a, a two on saltiness and a three on, you know, whatever. Part of the fun for you is also the process of cooking, right? Yeah, and, you know, so, like, you know, real-time control or very granular task management of determining the sequence of operations would be ideal. But I would love to talk to them about their development process, like where they're going with this. And I would also love... Um, to talk to Shadow, the Shadow Robot Company about about their their hands just, and stuff. Just the hands, yeah. Yeah, because that really is. I mean, that's a that's a big chunk of the puzzle gone right there. Like you know, once you've got once you've got some, uh, some kind of tool that's dexterous enough to deal with, with things in the kitchen that way, that would be that. Yeah, you know, basically, what I'm what I would propose to them is that the ultimate sort of 
and ultimate application of their technology wouldn't necessarily be replacing someone cooking. It would be vastly multiplying what one person could do. Then you have like a small team of chefs monitoring and taking direct control sometimes and switching things around in real time while like a few dozen robots are working. Yeah. I think people underestimate how many things can be handled by computers at this at this this point. Like how many of these tasks robots will be able to to, to look after. And I think there's there's jobs that everyone assumes are always going to be around. Things like you know taxi drivers and uh, and in a way chefs. And I I I think those are many of these jobs are going to disappear over time. Well, I mean for for fast food automation is already. Creeping in. Absolutely. I mean, there's no need in many of those cases. There's no need. Although, well, it's funny. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna both agree and disagree with you. The other thing, of course, is that people are also putting value in uh, being able to customize their stuff. I mean, like, look what's happening with McDonald's but now. Where al al almost automation helps that because basically, yes. yeah, in in some McDonald's, they have the kiosks and they're just picking what toppings go on and don't. Mm. You could easily easily build that into an automation system. Yeah. And it's gonna get it more more right than a person. Well and that's it. I think the the ability for them to be able to customize that's interesting. So I've changed my mind again. So the ability to be able to customize this stuff is coming about because of the automation. It would never exactly. be possible to do it in a in a in a financially viable way without it. Like imagine a few fry cooks having to manage like f like a dozen orders all with different toppings. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's expert systems, isn't it? It's, it's building the expertise into the robotics that are, that are looking after it. Um, again, you're seeing it a lot with, they're experimenting a lot with this with, in the medical profession where they're trying to have, they're trying to take the expertise of the doctors and get it to places where the doctors aren't, being able to do remote um, um, you know, surgeries, all this kind of stuff, um, or even just systems that can figure out what the problem is and solve it themselves. That can be done with sort of brute force, or I, I mean, I think more and more it will become about true intelligence. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. And obviously, eventually, all of these hardware systems would potentially be integrated into one software system. Yeah, which I'm guessing is going to be something like that. It's going to be on your iPhone, isn't it? You know, they, everything's going to be controlled by your phone. And so well, you know, the, the Molly Robotic app, uh, well, the, what they showed in that sort of fancy promo video is already on the phone. It already looks, yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, that's it. And it already looks like an app that you should you could be downloading anyway. So um, a future we look forward to. All right, so the future is robotic kitchen for sure. Is there a robot in your kitchen? Uh, no, not yet. Well, not yet, but we're hoping for it. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that would be really awesome. All right, so basically, uh, so let's let's put this out to people. Let us know about um, robotics that you think can relate to Q's culinary desires, um, and uh, and you know what's out there. And if you know anybody that we could be talking to about this, because we are uh, we are interested in uh, in Q opening his own restaurant. <laughs> well, no, not just that. Just you know, you know, every day I would be trying a new recipe, and you know, I feel kind of bad for the people who have to. Help me, because you know sometimes it's a lot of work, and right, you know. Hey, I resent dinner parties at my house because you know, I just can't stand all the dishes. That's yeah. what there. That's where my interest. Your interest may be in the cooking. My interest is in some well, system to look after the cleaning up. That, that, that well, a dishwasher. <laughs> it's not enough, because then you start dreading the dishwasher. Is it clean? Is it dirty? You know. Um, I'm just, of course, experiencing all this now because my wife's away for a week, and I actually have to look after the house. Now I really want a robot. Yeah. More than ever. Well, hopefully uh, Molly sees this or maybe we'll send them an email. I think we'll let Molly know that we're looking at that we're keeping an eye out for the show. Yeah. Um, and until we geek again. Cheerio.